Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to our From Idea to App series. This is part two, where we help you take the idea that's just living in your head and show you how that could be turned into a fully functional application. In part one, we talked about the database design for our application. In this video, part two, we're going to talk about the APIs that actually power our application. So we should probably first talk about what even is an API. Maybe you don't have any idea and that's totally okay. I'm gonna give you a quick example. So we have the database for our application and then we have our front end. Remember the database and APIs are part of the back end, and then your front end is the actual user interface and user experience. The API is used to take data from your front end and send it to your back end and take data from your back end and send it to your front end. A good example could be uh, a waiter in a restaurant, as an example. So let's say the front end is the restaurant, and the waiter is the API. So you, as a customer, place your order with the waiter at the front end. The waiter then takes that order and translates it into a language that the kitchen can understand, the kitchen in this case being your database or your server, which then returns the response, or your order in this case, back to the waiter who can then return it back to you in a format that you expect. So that's really what an API's main job is, is to take information, translate it into a way that each side can understand so that they can both work together. And you'll notice I have under this API's icon here, we have CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. You're gonna see this all the time as you're building your application. CRUD operations are essentially just standard operations that most of the time you are going to have to do to your database tables. So that is adding new data, reading data from those tables, editing data in those tables, and finally potentially deleting data in those tables. The cool thing about Xano is Xano gives you those APIs that perform those CRUD operations automatically. So you don't have to worry about building them. You can use them immediately. If we were, for example, building a backend from scratch, that piece goes away, and now we would have to manually create all of those API. Xano gives you them right from the start. So let's actually go back into Xano. So before we were taking a look at our database, so we can just get a quick primer here, we have our user, merchant, ledger, and deals table. If you haven't seen part one where we actually designed the database, I definitely recommend going back and taking a look at that. And we already have data in these tables. We have a user, we have a merchant, we have a deal, and finally we have a ledger record that just lists one of those deals as used by the user that we have. So now we're gonna go over to the API section so we can take a look at those CRUD endpoints that Xano has created for us. So the first API endpoints that we see here are authentication. We have APIs pre-built by Xano to log in a user, to get user data and to sign up a new user. I didn't have to build these, Xano gave these to me right from the start. And then as we scroll, you can see we have APIs for each of our tables. Each table has an API endpoint that gets all of the data, that adds new data, deletes data, gets a single piece of data, or edits data inside of that table. We have all of these APIs ready to go. So I wanna show that to you in action right now. So let's take a look at this Get Merchant API. Before we get into any of this here and what's actually happening, I'm just gonna take this endpoint URL. This is the link that your front end will use to actually call your API. I'm gonna open a new tab, I'm gonna paste it in there, and we will go ahead and run that. And you can see that I am given the data from our database table. We have our merchant information right here. This is outside of Xano. We just called our API that Xano has provided to us. If we go back to Xano and we head to our database, let's just add another merchant right now. Let's say we want Taco Bell and we'll give it the same location. So we've added a new record. Let's refresh our API. So now we can see that we not only have Pizza Hut, but we also have Taco Bell. So this API that Xano has provided for us went to our database, got the information, and displayed it, just like that. The only thing we had to do was add fields to our database and add data for Xano to read. So this is the no-code API builder. This is where you will spend most of your time in Xano. It's split into three sections. We have our inputs. The inputs are any information that this API actually needs to run. 
A good example of this would be an API that logs in a user. We're going to need probably an email and a password for that. So we would have those in our inputs section. And then we have our function stack. The function stack is what actually happens when this API is called. This is all of the logic that is executed, potentially using the inputs provided. And then we have our function stack. The function stack is what actually happens when this API runs. This is all of the business logic that runs when this API is called. And then finally, we have our response. So once any inputs have been taken, we've run through all of the steps in our function stack. What does this API actually return? In the case of this get merchant endpoint that we called over here, this API just returns the merchant. And we can see in our function stack, we have one step that just queries all of the records from the merchants table and returns them as merchant. So it's storing that data in a variable and our response is just returning the output of that variable. We can also test this in Xano by using run and debug. So if I just click run here, you can see we get that same information from our table as expected. So let's talk a little bit about creating an API endpoint from scratch. What do we actually need for our application? Well, we definitely need this endpoint that actually gets the merchants. But if you recall, we have this other screen here that gives the merchants and the deals that are associated with those merchants. And when we designed our database, we created relational data between the merchant and the deals table. So we can make these calls a lot simpler. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So let's go back to our APIs. We're going to add an API endpoint. And we have some default uh, API endpoints here. This is exactly what Xano has already generated for me. I'm actually going to use one of those as a base for the new API that we're building. Uh, I want to get data from my merchant table. And I'm going to say I want to get all of my merchant. Now we just need to give it a name. I'm going to say merchant and deals. And we'll go ahead and save that. And Xano takes us right to that API because I chose one of those default CRUD database operations. We have the original query. This is the same one that we had in the other endpoint here. We're just going to enhance it a little bit. And we're going to do that using the add-ons feature. The add-ons feature in Xano allows you to take one query and enhance it with relational data from other tables. So I'm going to click this plus button here to create an add-on. We're asked which database table do we want to add to this response. I want to add my deals table because I want the deals for each merchant. We have a few options for how we want the data returned. For example, a single item or a list of items, maybe even an item count, and then some more advanced options down here. For this example, we really just want a list of deals for each merchant. So that's what I'm going to choose. And then finally, we are asked to select the fields from the deals table that map back to our merchants table. So if you remember when we added that field, that field in our deals table was called merchant ID. So that is the field we're going to select there. We'll click next and we will go ahead and create this add-on and save our changes. So what happens now? Let's go ahead and rerun this. So you can see we now have our Pizza Hut merchant here with that 50% off deal. We don't have any deals for Taco Bell, so let's go ahead and go back to our database and we can add one just so you can get a clear idea of exactly what's happening here. We'll go ahead and add a 20% off to Taco Bell and just go right back to that page. We'll run this again. And so now we have that deal right under Taco Bell in this list. Now let's go ahead and copy the endpoint URL just like before and we will run this in a new tab. So it looks like what happened here? Well, we have our merchants, but I don't see any of those deals. What's going on? Well, one of the cool things about Xano is we have support for iterative drafts of your API endpoints. What does that mean? That means that you can iterate and change and test your APIs without impacting what's happening on the live API call. Maybe my application is using this API right now, but I don't want these changes to actually take place in my application until I'm ready. Well, because Xano has draft support, I can revert the change that I made if I want, or I can publish this to actually have it impact the live API call. 
So now that I've published, I can go ahead and refresh this. And so now you can see that we are not only returned those merchants, but we are also returned those deals as well. And we have now designed an API to power this second screen of our application. Now, if we refer back to our original design one more time, you can see we also have claimed deals here. So how do we actually get that data and how do we do it in the most efficient way possible? Well, the really cool thing about this add-ons feature is you can stack them recursively. So I could add on to the add-on that I've already created. So let's do that. So I'm gonna click the add-on button. I'm gonna create a new add-on. This time I want to reference our ledger table. Remember the ledger table is the table that keeps track of which users have used which deals. Let's say for this example, I really just want to know if the deal was used. So I'm gonna choose existence for this. So now we need to select fields from the ledger database table that map back to that deal of merchant add-on. So we want to definitely select the deal ID. We're also going to select the user ID. Now the user ID is not returned in that add-on, but what Xano does is it automatically maps that deal ID to what's being returned in the add-on, but it doesn't really know what to map for the user ID. I'm just going to hard code in a user ID of one and we'll click done and let's save that and let's run this again. So now we can see that we have our merchant, we have our deal that relates to that merchant, and then we also have this true value or user ID one. So we know that that user has used this deal, but not this Taco Bell deal. And let me just show you in action, we can change this. Uh, let's change this to the 20% off deal at Taco Bell and we'll go back and we will run this again, and you should see those true and false values have swapped. So now the 50% off deal is set to false, which means this hasn't been used yet, but the 20% off is set to true because we have used it. And we can again call our API from outside of Xano. Nothing has changed, but we're ready to go ahead and publish these changes. So let's go ahead and do that. We can refresh, and now we have those true and false deals coming from our live API. Okay, so in a short amount of time, we have not only set up our backend, but we've also added some data to it and built the APIs that will power our application. And we even saw a very simple idea of how to connect Xano to your front end by providing those endpoint URLs. The browser is, of course, not a very good front end, but it is a front end nonetheless. In part three of this series, we're going to talk all about connecting to external APIs and using that data as part of your application. Thanks for watching.